This patient is experiencing an acute myocardial infarction due to a ruptured plaque creating thrombosis of the proximal segment of the left anterior descending artery. Our current approach for patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction is immediate cardiac catheterization and percutaneous intervention. Balloon dilatation is first performed. Dissolution of the thrombus results in distal microembolization. Occlusion of the distal microvascular circulation increases myocardial injury, which may be reflected in further increased myocardial enzyme levels and additional myocardial damage. Following balloon dilatation, a long atherothrombotic lesion remains. Stent placement compresses the residual clot under the stent struts and causes a cheese greater effect. This results in an additional thrombotic embolization. Due to the apparent long length of the lesion, a second stent is placed. Placement of this stent also causes some distal embolization. Although the angiographic result is quite acceptable, a significant amount of residual thrombus persists, both at the stent edges and adherent to its struts. The poor distal microcirculatory flow, as assessed angiographically by myocardial blush, strongly correlates with a poor clinical outcome. Patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction may benefit from thrombectomy at the site of occlusion before balloon dilatation and stent implantation, thereby preventing embolization and distal myocardial injury. The same patient could be treated with angiogenic thrombectomy prior to stenting. The angiogenic catheter is shown here removing the bulk of the thrombus. A second pass removes more thrombus. The angiogenic catheter is passed several times until the operator is comfortable that all angiographically apparent thrombus has been removed. This reveals a short, moderately stenotic plaque, which is treated with a single stent without the need for predilatation. There is minimal, if any, residual thrombus present at the stent site.